it's Ash from Super Videos back for another video for season 8 of The Walking Dead. This is going to be my review for 805 which was called The Big Scary You and the promo breakdown for the next episode, episode 6, which is going to be called The King, The Widow and Rick. So if you're new here, this is basically a new way I'm doing these types of videos. I'm doing the review for the episode that just aired. After I do the review, I'm going to jump into the promo breakdown for the next episode that we're going to see and in this case it's going to be episode 6 which is going to be called The King, The Widow and Rick. So jumping into the review for the episode that just aired, 805, The Big Scary You. This was pretty much a Negan and Sanctuary centric episode and I loved this episode. This episode has got to be my favorite episode this season because it had a lot of great elements in there. It didn't feel forced, it didn't feel like there were pieces missing, although I do have a few problems with a few scenes, but overall, I think it was a great episode. And there was few scenes that they could have taken out, but overall, I really, really enjoyed this episode. It was my favorite episode this season, and it definitely had the right pace. Now, this episode was basically broken into three parts. The first part was with Negan and Father Gabriel being stuck in that little room that they were stuck in. And the whole scenario where they had to run away from there and get it into the sanctuary. The second storyline involved the members at the sanctuary itself and all the saviors there, all the high level ranking members there. Them just trying to find a solution for the mess that they find themselves in. The third storyline was involving Rick and Daryl. And it was very brief, I would say, considering the other parts of the story, but... You know, their story was interesting, and I'm going to get to that first. So first I'm going to talk about Rick and Daryl's kind of scenes together and the whole fight that they had. Then I'm going to jump into the members of the sanctuary and them trying to find a solution and, you know, the tension that was building up at the sanctuary. And then finally I'm going to go into the Gabriel and Negan part, and then I'm going to jump into the promo breakdown. So the first part with Rick and Daryl, I absolutely loved it. I think they didn't make the fight seem out of place and unrealistic and cheesy. They definitely didn't do that. They made it very genuine and I loved that. I loved that dynamic between them, you know, the thing that led to their fight. Rick didn't want to blow up the sanctuary because he was afraid innocent men, women, and children were going to get killed. And Daryl obviously wanted to do that because he's just hungry for killing all of the saviors and hungry for revenge. So that tension that they were building and what led to that fight was definitely genuine, mainly because of what Rick went through. So two episodes before this, we had Rick finding Gracie. And that was the exact time when he killed that savior and found out that he was just protecting his daughter. So, you know, it was definitely in character for Rick to have those emotions and to want to try to find a peaceful solution in a way that doesn't kill innocent people. So I definitely understand. I definitely understand that Daryl is hungry for revenge. So that whole fight between them seemed very genuine and I loved that. Now there was one thing that broke me out of the scene. In the middle of Daryl and Rick's fight, they jumped back into Eugene playing video games and all of the power shut down and then they jumped back into the fight with Daryl and Rick. I just didn't understand why they did that. It broke all the momentum that they had going into that fight. So that was one of the major problems I had with this episode. But when everything is said and done, when Rick and Daryl jump away from that explosion, which I loved, it was epic, we have them splitting up. Now, they could have explained a bit more why they were splitting up and maybe built on that tension between them a bit more. It seemed a little flat in my opinion, but I loved the whole fight. But the aftermath was a bit flat for me. But they split up and we have Rick kind of noticing something in the air and there's a helicopter. And that's one of the major question marks I have right now. What was that helicopter? And I'm pretty sure many of you have that same question. I'm going to kind of do a bit more digging and do a separate video on that, but that's definitely an interesting topic. And it's something I didn't expect. I didn't see that coming. And then obviously we have someone looking at Rick and we find that it's the scavengers. So this is pretty much what leads to Rick being captured. And obviously if we take a look at the promo breakdown, we know that 
Rick does get captured in the next episode by the scavengers. So we were definitely right about that. But also they kind of explained that they were spying on Rick and that's how they knew the best time to approach and to capture him. So that was pretty cool. So that's basically that first part. Then jumping into the sanctuary and that whole thing. I love the tension that they were building there and the kind of discussion that the saviors had there consisting of Simon, Dwight and Gavin. I really like their dialogues and the way they were trying to find a solution. And I love how much character development Simon is getting now that he is the leader because Negan is not there. So I love that character development that they're giving him and also the tension that they're building between Gavin, Simon and Dwight. That was pretty cool. Now it's going to be interesting to see what happens next because everybody knows someone is a spy there and they're going to have to deal with it sooner or later. And at this point, I think it's safe to assume that Eugene knows that Dwight is the spy. So is he going to rat Dwight out or is he going to work with him? So it's going to be interesting to kind of dive more into that when they get back into the sanctuary again. And, you know, we get a resolution in terms of what happens there. But I really love that whole storyline between them. And, you know, it just made it a whole lot better when at the end, Negan shows up with Father Gabriel and, you know, he gives that mini speech and everything. I really love that. It was pretty cool. Now, that's pretty much all I wanted to share for the sanctuary bit. Now jumping into the Father Gabriel and Negan part. I love that. I really like the way they set everything up and had Negan confess what he confessed. This was basically part of his backstory or his past. So for comic readers, you know Here's Negan is all about what he was talking about when he said that he lost his wife and he couldn't put her down and everything like that. So that's basically the origin of Negan. That's Here's Negan. So I love the way they brought that forward. But also it didn't feel forced. Because if they just made it so that Negan confesses to Father Gabriel just like that, it would have felt a bit forced. But they kind of made it feel right. And I really like that. Now overall, I really like the nuggets that they gave us for Negan's backstory. They gave us just enough for it not to feel the same as something we might see later on with Negan and somebody else, but also they gave us just enough so that it's something unique to the TV show and it's something cool. So I definitely like that. Now, I really like Negan and Father Gabriel working together and getting out of there. That whole scene with them covering themselves in guts and finding their way out had a lot of no way out feel to it. It was very no way out-esque that I really loved. And that goes back to this season having a lot of references or callbacks or whatever to previous seasons. So I really, really like that. I think it was pretty cool. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next at the sanctuary. But that's basically all I wanted to share. Overall, this was a great episode. I really loved it. It was definitely my favorite episode this season. It was rightly paced, like I said, and it had a lot of cool, unique and surprising and shocking elements in there that I really enjoyed. Now, that being said, let's jump into the promo breakdown for the next episode, The King, The Widow, and Rick. So let's get into the promo breakdown. On the next episode. So here we have Rick walking away, and this is basically a continuation of where it left off last time. And, you know, at this time, he's basically being spied on by the scavengers. EMC's The Walking Dead. And at this point, I'm pretty sure that he's going to discover that the scavengers are there and, you know, he's going to be captured. There might be a mini firefight or something like that, but I think he will definitely get captured at this point. Your choice. Same thing I wanted before. We have this scene here, which obviously reveals that Rick is captured by the scavengers. And we have Rick saying... A choice just like before or something like that and that's basically referring to the deal they were trying to make before so Rick is saying I still want to make a deal with you and everything like that so it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out obviously it's not going to go well for Rick because we know he's going to be stripped of his clothes and he's going to be thrown into that container based on the trailer deal or we destroy you and he says or would destroy you so he still has that confident, cocky kind of mentality, but at the same time, he still wants to make a deal with them. So it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. We have a 
dialogue with Maggie, she's saying something along the lines of, we have to end this. So, you know, she doesn't like the fact that all of these saviors are prisoners at the hilltop and everything like that. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Jesus and Maggie and how they're going to resolve this whole thing and whether the saviors who are prisoners at the hilltop are going to become a problem. And we see a lot of scenes with all of the saviors that are being held as prisoners at the hilltop. We see a few shots with Jared as well. We have this shot here and this is Jared as well based on his clothes and everything and he's basically trying to break free it seems like with the rock. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. We have Maggie saying every option's on the table so maybe she's referring to execution maybe she wants all of the saviors to be executed maybe that's what it's referring to but you know Maggie definitely doesn't feel right about keeping these prisoners at the hilltop. And I can kind of agree with that. I don't think it's a safe thing to do that. But maybe execution is not the best thing. But, you know, I do love the tension that they're building with Jesus and Maggie as well. Because obviously Jesus just doesn't want to kill them, doesn't want to let them go or anything like that. But we have Maggie, you know, putting everything together and realizing that it's not safe to keep them here. So I really love that. And it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. We have this scene with Carl here. And this is basically Carl going back to that traveler that we saw in the premiere of this season. The guy that he met at the gas station, who we're assuming is going to be Sadiq from the comics. So in this scene, we have him bringing Sadiq some food based on one of the sneak peeks that we got a few weeks back before season 8 even started. So yeah, this is basically Carl bringing Sadiq some food. This is interesting because we have a few walkers fighting Carl and Carl falls over. Now there's like an animal carcass in the back. At first I thought it was most likely Shiva, but it doesn't look like Shiva from here. It looks like a pig or something. So maybe it's different. Maybe it's not Shiva. It could still be Shiva, but it doesn't look like Shiva anymore. It's going to be interesting to see why Carl is in this mess. Obviously, we know he went to help Siddiq bring him food, but what is this animal that's here? And why is he surrounded by all these walkers? And is he going to be able to get out? We have Tara saying, I'm going to kill them. And Daryl says, maybe you and me both. So we know where Tara stands. She wants to kill all the saviors. We know where Daryl stands. He wants to kill all the saviors. So it's like a match made in heaven, I guess. They could work together and kill all the saviors together. Nobody's stopping them. They both believe in the same thing. So that's an odd kind of matchup, but it's an interesting one. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. We have Daryl saying we don't have to wait so long. Maybe he is referring to them killing the saviors. So maybe they want to act quickly. Maybe they want to get into action right away or something along those lines. Then we have Michonne and Rosita here. So we're most likely going to touch base with them again and basically see where they go because we do know they are going somewhere. Maybe to get some supplies, maybe to go find Rick. Maybe they find that Rick is missing at this point and he's been captured and they're going to look for him or something like that. But they're definitely going on a mission together. So it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. We have Jesus here. He's looking through the cracks of the wall at the hilltop. So maybe he's looking at some of the prisoners. Maybe he's looking at someone trying to help the prisoners. Maybe Gregory or maybe something along those lines. We have Rick saying, my people will win to Jadis. And that's basically part of him trying to make a deal with the scavengers. Saying that, you know, this is what we've done to the saviors so far. They are broken. They can't come back from this. And my people are still going to come back and kill all of the other saviors. And we're going to win. Are you going to be with us? Or are we going to have to kill you too? So that's where it's going, I think, with... Rick trying to make a deal with the scavengers. We know it's not going to end well, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. We did see a quick scene with Carol shooting the shotgun. We had Jerry in the back as well. And it seems like in this episode, we're going to go back to the kingdom as well. So it's going to be a mixture of all of the different communities. Now, I don't think we're going to see too much from the kingdom because we had that kingdom centric episode, but they're going to be featured in this episode as well. But that's basically everything that I wanted to share for this promo. That's it for this video. See you next time for another super video.